Well, you know, I, now, if you're asking me, did I catch flack? I absolutely did. But my peace came from knowing who I was and whose I was. And, and, and like I said, my testimony is not your typical story of, you know, people leaving church. I didn't, I didn't, leave, I didn't leave the principles of God. I didn't leave the principles or, or the things that I learned in church about right, about right living and right standing with God. See, the bottom line is that when, when you're a child of God, if we're truly going to represent him, then he's got to have an ambassador in every station in life. So if you are if you're a teacher, preacher, garbage can collector, ditch digger, or a radio personality, when you say that you know God, that it's your life that reflects that. Not not just not just your words. It's not about about rolling a bunch of scriptures off to people, but it's about your life and your lifestyle. And so for me, you know, I thank God because I was able to maintain my relationship with him. And so since I didn't have a record deal to sing gospel, I sung gospel in my show. You know, I put a gospel song on all of my records. And I would go into the club and, and I would sing uh, gospel. And, and, and sometimes there were people who were there who may have lost their fellowship with God. They would come to me and talk to me afterwards and say, you know, hey, I used to be saved. I used to have a relationship with God. And I would have the opportunity to, to minister to them and say, well, hey, don't you know that God is married to the backslider? I've had opportunities to pray with people and they're giving their life back to the Lord. So it's those types of things, Jay, that let me know that I was on track for what I was called to do in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. I and understand I... that it's unusual, but you know, even Jesus in the Bible gave, he gave uh, parallel stories and, 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 uh, about like the lady with the lost coin, how she looked in unusual places. And the Bible talks about us being the salt of the earth and us being the light of the world. And how can you be the salt of the world? How can salt truly save or preserve if we keep it in the shaker? So we can't keep this good news in the four walls of the church because the church was never meant to be a hotel for the whole it was it was always meant to be the hospital for the sick so I thank God for my experience in the in, in the R&B world I didn't stop singing R&B because I was doing anything wrong because I understood that the songs that I sung about was about life some people I, I got asked this question because I would go to radio stations or do my interviews and be talking about Jesus and they like well how in the world could somebody that's as religious as you you know sing a song like as we lay and I'm like well first of all it's really not about religion it's about relationship and so for me as we lay was never a song that glorified infidelity it was a, a real song about a real life issue real life choices that two people made two people who didn't count up the cost who didn't who, who, who didn't understand that the, that the decisions that they made didn't just affect them but it affects everybody in your world so as we lay was a sad song about regret hindsight being 2020 and the and the wisdom that comes out of as we lay is you need to count up the cost before you get lost in the second, in the minute, in the hour. So and then after, as we lay, I had a song called Husband. It was never saying go get that woman's husband. It says that my desire for you is strong. Just really keeping it real with your real feelings, your real emotions. It says, but I won't do wrong. You're that lady's husband. So I'm letting you go, letting you go. So people in life find themselves in real situations. But I think that our music has to be powerful enough to to speak to them and to deal with real life issues and give them answers and give them something in their arsenal to actually be able to make the right kind of decisions in life. Right, definitely that. And you took the question out of my mouth. I was going to ask you about As We Lay and that yeah. song right there was a crossover hit and it yeah. was sampled by Fat Joe and Jennifer Lopez for Hold You Down. Now, And, uh, and, and you know what else too? Um, um, don't forget Kelly Price redid it too. I was about to bring that up. How'd you feel about Kelly Price remaking As We Lay? She redid it. So that was an opportunity for, you know, the music to continue, you know, to live and to, you know, to, uh, to, to be exposed to a new generation. What I'm, what I'm really knocked out about is just sometimes you get asked about, like, how do you feel about young people doing your music or samples and things like that? And I really see it, Jay, as an opportunity for the music to continue to live. I had an opportunity to co-write uh, uh, Computer Love with Roger Troutman, and the song has been sampled by, like, Biggie and, and, and Tupac and and so many others but that's like you know once when you write a song it's like that's like your baby and then when somebody samples it or do, or you know or, or they remake it that's like your grandbaby but I'm, I'm really knocked out about the fact that um Lil Mo just she just redid uh Husband 
on her new CD, and Jennifer Hudson is redoing Go On Without You on her on her new CD. So it's like the music is continuing to live, you know. So that's really a blessing. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it that was so special about Zap's music? Because I know Computer Love is definitely a staple in terms of like riding down on a strip in your car, and you was doing backing vocals on I Want to Be Your Man. Now, you can correct me on this. The first single I think you did was that was Girl Cut It Out. 